my second quick video on my module on uh, <clears throat> proving tray identities. And in this video, we're going to focus on uh, identities that we're proving that involve adding or subtracting fractions necessarily. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at this first one. Um, you notice that we do have two fractions. As a matter of fact, uh, in terms of which side we want to work on here, we're probably going to want to work on the left side because it is the more complicated of the two. But the fact is, we're looking at something that already has everything in terms of, say, sines and cosines, even though there are no cosines. But you couldn't turn, like, say, a secant into a 1 over a cosine, or you couldn't turn, like, a sine squared into a 1 minus cosine squared. So we're going to have to work with what we have. So in terms of finding a common denominator, let's go ahead and bury this very, very quickly. But in terms of a review of algebra, if you had two expressions that are fractional, you wanted to add them together, the common denominator would be the product of the two denominators here. So we'd get a product uh, of the two denominators be BD. So basically, you multiply the two denominators together. And let's face it, if I had to take the left side here times D, I'd have to take it on the top and the bottom. So on top, I'd get AD. You would get AD plus or minus now on over here to get a common denominator of BD. You would have to take the top and the bottom times B. You get BC. So AD plus BC all over BD, okay? So in this case, we've got uh, two fractions, and these fractions happen to be these complex-like expressions. So what we end up with is this. Our common denominator on the left side is going to be the product of these two denominators. So we get 1 over, uh, oh, sorry, 1 minus the sine of alpha, uh, 1 plus the sine of alpha. Uh, and then we'll talk about what you get up in the numerator. Uh, before we do that, though, I want everybody to notice here that what we're multiplying together are two conjugate pairs. And remember, when you multiply conjugate pairs, you get a difference of two squares. So we'll do the long way in this video, but just know you get a difference of two squares. So up top here, I need to take this one's denominator uh, times this one's numerator, and I get 1 times anything as itself. So I get 1 plus the sine of, sine of alpha, and this is plus plus 1 times 1 minus the sine of alpha, so I get 1 minus the sine of alpha. Okay, so in terms of the numerator, let's talk about a few things here. We're adding these two expressions together, and instantly I notice this 1 here and this 1 here combine out to be a 2. So we get 2, and then we say uh, positive sine of alpha and negative sine of alpha. These two things, they actually cancel each other out, so we just get 2 on the top. As far as the bottom goes, we get 1 times 1 is 1, you know, if we foil this out, and we get plus, plus the sine of alpha if we're doing this. But then I turn right around and I get minus the sine of alpha. So hence the multiplying conjugate pairs and getting your middle terms to cancel out and getting a difference of two squares. So here's my difference, negative, and then sine times sine is sine squared of alpha. From the bottom I get one minus the sine squared of alpha. Okay, so now what we've done is we've transformed the left-hand side into this expression right here. Keep in mind though, we are trying to prove that this equals two secant squared of alpha. So the question is, well, how can I arrive at this? Well, potentially looking at the right side and saying, well, 2 secant squared of alpha, that'd be the same thing as 2 times 1 over cosine, cosine squared of alpha. Maybe it helps me to look at the fact that this is what I'm trying to get to. How can I get this left side that is 2 over 1 minus sine squared of alpha to turn it into the right side? Uh, notice when you have anything squared, you might be dealing with something Pythagorean. So again, for the million gajillionth time. Cosine squared plus the sine squared is always 1. This always leads us to a couple of other conclusions. For example, cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared always. And also sine squared, wherever I see that, I can substitute that uh, substitute a 1 minus cosine squared in for it. In this instance, I see that I have a 1 minus sine squared down here. And that is the same thing as, looking right here, is the same thing as cosine squared. And the reason why I'd want to make such a substitution is because if I had 2 over cosine squared alpha, then what I'd be dealing with really is this expression right here on the right. So this would be the same thing as, as let's see, equals uh, chain here. We say 2 times the reciprocal of cosine squared of alpha, which is 2 secant squared of alpha. So we use some Pythagorean substitutions. We also had to add, you know, two fractions together. Okay, moving right along, let's take a look at this identity on the right here, which doesn't necessarily involve, you know, uh, I, I guess, uh, adding or subtracting fractions. But what we want to do is prove that the left-hand side here is actually equal to the right-hand side. So we're going to work with probably the left-hand side here because it is the more complicated of the two sides. Uh, so I don't know, I guess we could get started by maybe looking at, hey, I've got a tangent squared plus 1 and a cosine squared minus 1. Are there any types of substitutions we could probably do with this? So I'm going to go ahead and write this out again, but we say cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. This is one of our Pythagorean identities. The only reason I bring this up is because we're dealing with things up here that look somewhat like our Pythagorean identity. Uh, also this, 
Uh, we say if I were to divide everything here by cosine squared, I would get this. I'd get 1 because cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. Uh, sine squared divided by cosine squared would be tangent squared. So 1 plus tangent squared. And this would be equal to 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared. So this is very true also. Uh, we also, if we were to divide everything by sine, not that we need that in this example, but cosine squared over sine squared, that would be equal to uh, cotangent squared. Uh, sine squared divided by uh, sine squared would be 1. And then 1 divided by sine squared would be a cosecant squared. So here's the entire list of all three of our Pythagorean identities. Can we get them to work for us here, knowing that these things are already true? Well, I notice that I have, a say, a tangent squared plus 1. That would be the same thing as, say, a secant squared. So as far as our original expression goes, this left-hand side here, we could say, well, where I had a 1 plus tangent squared, perhaps, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it'll help to put a, a secant of x uh, in for that, okay? As far as cosine squared minus 1 goes, could I form a cosine squared minus 1 using this expression right here? And the interesting thing is, hey, if cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, then the best I could do for you is if I put this sine squared over here, uh, or, or perhaps, sorry, put the cosine squared over here with my 1 on the right, we get this sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared, which is something we need to have kind of in the back of our heads anyways. You'll notice that this 1 minus cosine squared doesn't look exactly like cosine squared minus 1. Order matters here. But what we could do is essentially this. We could factor a negative 1 out front, which would instead switch the order of these things around. So if I do uh, a negative 1 out front here, then I need to factor a negative 1 out in front of this on the left-hand side also. Okay, You can look at it as multiplying both sides by a negative 1. But essentially, negative sine squared of x, negative sine squared of x would be equal to uh, negative cosine squared x minus 1. Okay. So essentially, when we talk about this cosine squared x minus 1, uh, what that does is it equals a negative negative sine squared of x. So we can say this is negative sine squared of x. Okay. So now working with this, we say, well, what could we do? I don't know. Uh, we could change our secant squared into terms of like sines and cosines. Keep in mind what we're trying to get to here is a negative tangent squared, which is itself negative sine squared over cosine squared by definition. So if I were to work with these two things, well, rewriting the secant squared as 1 over cosine squared would actually be helpful here because now I'm taking this times negative sine squared of x over 1. And so multiplying straight across, we notice that we get this negative sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x, which itself equals negative and then a tangent of x. Okay, So this long chain of reasoning here just shows that the left side was able to be turned into the right side, which is what we we're trying to prove. We we're trying to show that these two statements were equal. Cheers.